Hi guys, this is Mrs. Logue. I am going to be going over Unit 3 Lesson 6 in this video. It is what factors affect climate, and this is what we've been working on in class. So the student's learning goal is the students will understand the water cycle and be able to describe how certain conditions describe weather in a particular place and time. And these are the two benchmarks that we are focusing on in this lesson. First one, students will be able to recognize that some of the weather-related differences, such as temperature and humidity, are found among different environments, such as swamps, deserts, and mountains. The students will be able to describe characteristics, specifically temperature and precipitation, of different climate zones as they relate to latitude, elevation, and proximity to bodies of water. Okay. So first thing we talked about is, is what climate actually is. It is the long-term weather patterns of a place. Different from weather, weather describes what the atmosphere is like at a given time and place. Weather can change very quickly. It can change from morning to afternoon, whereas climate is something that does not change quickly. Scientists find the climate of an area by averaging weather conditions over a period of 30 years or more. Um, and the particular areas they look for are the temperature, wind speed, wind direction, cloud cover, air pressure, and the amount of precipitation. Um, and in case you're not aware, the microscope icon on the PowerPoint just represents critical information that the students need to know. All right, let's go ahead and skip this. All right, so next section, we're gonna talk about climate zones. A climate zone is an area that has similar average temperatures and precipitation throughout. There are three main climate zones on Earth. They are tropical, temperate, and polar. I like to describe them as hot, medium, and cold. It helps um, the students to differentiate between them. Okay, so the tropical, temperate, and polar climate zones are based on their distance from the equator. The equator is the imaginary line that divides Earth into its northern and southern hemispheres, or halves. And an area's latitude, or distance from the equator, determines what climate zone it is in. So the closer it is to the equator, the hotter it will be. So in this diagram, the red line represents the equator. And what you're gonna see is that this whole section here, this is gonna be the tropical zone you have actually two temperates. You have temperate here, and you have temperate here in the Southern Hemisphere. You also have two polar. You have a North Pole and the South Pole. So we have a polar region, a polar region, a temperate, a temperate, and then tropical in the center. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and skip this video. We sometimes show video clips in class, which offer a lot of information but for sake of time we're going to skip them here okay so tropical climates are found near the equator the sun is directly overhead nearly all year and as a result the area gets a lot of direct heat from the sun which is why it is so hot temperatures in tropical climates are typically greater than 18 degrees celsius and tropical climates can get different amounts of precipitation here is a picture of a typical tropical environment. Temperate climates. These are found in the middle latitude, so they're halfway between the tropical and the polar. For most of the year, a temperate climate has temperatures in between 10 and 18 degrees Celsius. And most temperate climates have all four seasons. <coughs> Excuse me. Temperate climates are found in the middle latitudes, as I was saying, and they can get different amounts of precipitation. So here is a picture of a typical temperate climate. The trees are changing color in the fall. Polar, <clears throat> this is the cold climate zone. They are farthest from the equator and they are found near the Earth's poles. Polar climates get very little precipitation. <coughs> they are covered in snow and ice year round. Temperatures in polar climates are typically less than 10 degrees Celsius. And here is an illustration of a typical polar climate. You can see a glacier uh, in the background. 
All right, so if we look at this particular map, you should be able to identify the tropical temperate and polar <clears throat> zones on the map. Okay, so here we have tropical. Tropical is going to be in the center again, um, as seen in the previous slide. So something else I wanted to show you um, that you need to know, it's like, however far away you are from the equator, you're gonna have about the same climate. So this area here is gonna have the same climate as this area here, because they're on the same latitude. Also, this area here will have the same climate as this area here, because they're the same distance from the equator. And then we have our temperate and our polar. So as, as you can see, we have two polars, two temperates, and then the tropical in the center. Distance from the equator, elevation, closeness to bodies of water, and landforms can all affect climate. Locations near the equator are warm, but high elevations can make the climate cooler. Snowy mountaintops can be found in tropical places because of elevation. You can have a mountain, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in the tropical climate zone that actually has snow at the top because the higher you go into the atmosphere, the colder it gets. So the bottom of the mountain could be a tropical environment. You go about halfway up, you might have a temperate environment and then near the top, it's actually like a polar. And here's a video we're gonna go ahead and skip. All right, so water heats up and cools down more slowly than land does. Because of this, places near the coast are often cooler in summer and warmer in winter than places far away from the ocean. The Gulf Stream is a current of warm ocean water that affects the climate in North America and Europe. It makes their climates warmer because it actually brings warm water. <clears throat> so you can see in this diagram, the Gulf Stream here. Okay. A rain shadow effect can happen when wet air rises and falls on the ocean side of a mountain, creating a wet climate. As air moves down the other side of the mountain, it's dry. This creates a dry climate or a rain shadow. <clears throat> so you could basically have one side of the uh, mountain that is green and fertile and lots of rain, and then the other side is completely dry and desert-like. So here's a diagram, again, of the rain shadow effect. So you got your warm air rising, cools down as it gets closer to the tops of the mountains, clouds form, rain comes down. So you can see the side of the mountain is green and fertile, but on the other side of the mountain, it is dry and desert-like. So climate affects where organisms can live. It also affects the non-living parts of the environment. Rain, wind, temperature, and other factors can affect the land surfaces and the types of organisms that can live in the area. All right, so let's talk about a few of them. Desert. A desert is a dry environment with temperatures that vary greatly. I want you to focus on that word dry. It's in bold print for a reason. Dry is the word you need to associate with desert. Deserts are dry. A lot of students tend to think that all deserts are hot, which is not true. Some deserts are hot, some deserts are cold. The polar regions are deserts. Antarctica is a desert, it's a cold desert. But one thing that all deserts have in common is that they're all dry. Living things in deserts need to be able to survive with very little water because it is so dry. So here's an illustration, again, another photograph of a hot desert, very dry. Here is another desert area. All right, let's move on to swamps. Now swamps are pretty much the opposite of deserts. Deserts are dry, swamps are humid, okay? Swamps can be made from fresh water, salt water, or both, known as brackish. Swamps occur in places where the ground cannot soak in all the water that reaches the area. Temperatures can be very high in swamps for part of the year. So here's a swamp, and this is all water down here. Okay, so swamps are typically described their climate as hot and humid. Here's another one. And then we have tropical rainforests. 
Tropical rainforests are found in warm, wet climates. Tropical tells you hot, rain tells you wet. Okay, so it's gonna get lots of rain. The amount of sunlight in tropical rainforests is nearly the same year round. Vegetation or plant life covers most of the land in tropical rainforests. They're also known as jungle. And there's another picture. 